Okay, we are live. All sergeant, will you please start your recording? PC recording has started. According to cloud has begun. Thank you. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the subcommittee on zoning and franchises. At this time, at all panelists, please turn on your videos. I repeat, all panelists, please turn on your videos. Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent mode. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. I repeat, land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Chair, we are ready to begin. Thank you. Thank you, good morning. Uh, I'm council member Francisco Moya. I'm chair of the subcommittee on zoning and franchises. I'm joined remotely here today by uh, my colleagues, council member uh, Levin Rivera, Gradenchek, Borelli, um, Ayala and Eugene. Uh, today we will vote on items heard by the subcommittee at our meetings, uh, at, our, at our meetings of January 26th and February 23rd, including pre-considered LUs 718 and uh, 719 for the 1620 Cortel U Road rezoning in Brooklyn, pre-considered LEUs 730, uh, 735 and 736 for the 9132 63rd Drive rezoning in Queens, and pre-considered LEU 737 for the uh, 245-01 Jamaica Avenue rezoning in Queens. Uh, I also note that the pre-considered LU 733, 734 on today's agenda for the uh, 737 Fourth Avenue rezoning and uh, 738, 739, and 740 for the uh, Arvern East proposal are being laid over. Uh, we will also uh, hold public hearings on the 1099 Webster Avenue rezoning relating to property located in the Bronx and the 50-25 uh, Barnett Avenue rezoning related to property located in Queens. Um, we will uh, begin with a vote to approve pre-considered LU numbers 735-736 for the 9132-63rd uh, drive rezoning related to property in Council Member Kozlowitz's district in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing R4 C2 uh, two district to an R7A C23 district and a related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing uh, area utilizing options one and two. Uh, together, these actions will facilitate the development of a new nine story mixed use building with approximately seven, uh, 74 dwelling units, uh, up to 24 of which would be affordable as well as ground floor commercial use and an added parking garage with 17 spaces accessory to the residential use and 29 spaces uh, accessory to the commercial use. Uh, Council member Kozlowitz is in support of the proposal. Uh, we will also vote to approve pre-considered LUs number um, 737 for the 245-01 uh, uh, Jamaica Avenue rezoning related to property in council member Gredenchek's district in Queens. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment in an existing R4 district to change a C13 commercial overlay district to a C23. The proposal would enable the applicant to file a special permit application to the Board of Standards and Appeals to legalize a physical cultural uh, culture establishment within an existing commercial building. Council member Gredenchek is in support of the proposal. Uh, we will also vote to approve with modifications uh, pre-considered LUs number 718, 719 for the 1620 Cortel U Road rezoning related, relating to property in council member Eugene's district in Brooklyn. The application as proposed seeks a zoning uh, map amendment and a related zoning text amendment to facilitate the development of a new nine-story mixed-use building with approximately 85 dwelling units, up to 16 of which would be affordable, as well as ground floor commercial use and 44 accessory uh, parking spaces. Our modification will be to remove MIH option two while retaining option one. Council member Eugene is in support of the proposal as modified. Uh, and finally, uh, regarding the 1620 Cortel U Road rezoning proposal on today's agenda. Sure. Yes. Sorry. This is a paragraph. Oh, yes. Yep. You're, you're correct. My apologies. Um, I now want to um, 
take the opportunity to um, allow uh, Council Member Eugene uh, for some remarks. Uh, can you hear me? We can, can hear you. Hear me? Yep. Thank you much. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Chair Moya for uh, the opportunity to speak today to express my support for this proposal with zoning. I would also like to especially thank uh, all the members of the community and the public who have been so involved in this process for this rezoning. Thank you also for all uh, your dedication and making your voice heard on this uh, development uh, proposal that is so important for the future of the, the neighborhood. After many conversations with the applicant, the community board and members of the community, we have finally reached a place of consensus, built on trust and commitment to responsible development. The simple fact is that the as of right scenario here offers no public benefit in terms of affordable housing, of ensuring communities serving retail on an active transit and commercial corridor. By supporting this application with the modification of removing MIH option two, we are ensuring a future where permanently affordable units are required as part of any new development on this block. We also have Biden commitment from the developer in the form of a <laughs> declaration tied to the commitment that the community worked so hard to ensure, including number one, maintaining the supermarket on the ground floor. Number two, permanently affordable housing on the MIH option one. Number three, financial support for the nearby town. In addition, after feedback from the community during this public review, the applicant has voluntarily altered the proposed massing of the building to reduce the visual impact of the building and adjusted the unit mix to reduce the number of studio and one bedroom to create more family units. Let me conclude by saying that I had several meetings with the people in the community and also with uh, the developer. But one of the things that I lack also in this proposal is the opportunity in addition to the uh, opportunities for affordable housing, but also opportunities for jobs in the community. We are facing a very, very, very tough situation, tragic situation in New York with COVID-19. So many people are without jobs. It will take a long time for us to get back on track and to create job opportunities in this uh, city. I think people in my district will have the opportunity to have a job. And also the businesses that are selling construction supplies, they will have the opportunity also to get a, a piece of the cake. And I think this is a good project for my district and I'm supporting it. And I thank you, Shamoya, and for your leadership. And I thank the members of the community, the member of the community board, and also the board president who were involved in that. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, council member Eugene. I just wanna make a quick correction um, for the record um, with uh, pre-considered LUs number uh, six, uh, 735 and 736 for 91, 32, 63rd uh, drive. It is 28 accessory parking spaces, uh, not 29. Um, I will now also like to recognize that we've been joined by uh, Council Member Reynoso and Council Member uh, Gibson. Uh, I now call for a vote to approve LUs 735, 736, and 737, uh, and also to approve with modifications. Uh, I have described LU 718 and 719. Council, if you can please call the roll. Chair Moya. I vote aye. Council Member Levin. Council Member Reynoso. I vote aye. 
Council Member Gordenchik. Hi, congratulations to uh, Council Member Eugene. Thank you very much, Council Member. Council Member Ayala. Yeah, I need a minute. I'm sorry. You can come back. Council Member Rivera. Aye. Council Member Borelli. We have, excuse me, Council Member Levin. Uh, Council Member Borelli on a vote of the land use items. We appear to have temporarily lost Council Member Borelli. If I understand, Council Member Levin will be rejoining. Uh, Council Member Ayala. Yeah, I vote aye on all with the exception of uh, LU number 718, 719, the Cortland Avenue rezoning. I And, I, and with all due respect, I, I, I have, you know, much respect for uh, Council Member Eugene and I, I'm sure that, you know, a lot of thought process went into this, but I just feel really strongly about you know, rezoning is being our one and only opportunity to really leverage as much affordable housing. Um, and I think that the developer had an opportunity to seek subsidies to allow for more uh, development of, of affordable housing in this project and decided not to. And 16 units, um, it's really not, you know, it's not a lot of housing. And I, I think, you know, it, it just is really important for me uh, as a member of this committee um, to try to leverage um, these relationships in a way that really makes sense for the community. And I appreciate the, you know, the, uh, the, the jobs, uh, the opportunity for jobs and, um, and, and the fact that there will be 16 units, but 16 units is simply not enough for me. So with that, I vote aye on all with the exception of land use number 718. Thank you. Do we have council member 11 on a vote of the land use items? Okay, Chair, the vote is currently at five in the Guys, I'm here, it's Council Member Borelli. Excuse me, Council Member Borelli on a vote of the land use items. Yes, I vote aye and all, I'm sorry for the technical issue. No problem, thank you very much. Chair, the vote will remain open uh, for Council Member 11, but the vote is currently uh, six in the affirmative, zero in the negative with no abstentions except for LU 718 and 719, which are adopted uh, five in the affirmative and one in the negative and no abstentions. Uh, once again, the vote will remain oh. open unless we have council member 11. I'd like to, I'd like to vote aye on all, if that's okay. Thank you, Thank council you. member. Uh, Politics and action from multitasking <laughs> right, yeah. and action. Okay, I voted, I voted, all good. Um, Chair, the vote on the land use items is seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative with no abstentions except for LU 718 and 719, which are adopted six in the affirmative, one in the negative with no abstentions. Uh, these items are approved for, uh, approved for recommendation to the full land use committee. Chair, you're on mute. Thank you, sorry about that. Um, I will now turn uh, to our hearings, uh, but I will first uh, recognize the subcommittee council uh, to review the uh, remote meeting procedures. Thank you, Chair Moya. I am Arthur Ha, counsel to this subcommittee. Members of the public wishing to testify were asked to register for today's hearings. If you wish to testify and have not already registered, we ask that you please do so now by visiting the New York City Council website at www.council.nyc.gov to sign up. Members of the public may also view a live stream broadcast of this meeting at the council's website. As a technical note for the benefit of the viewing public, if you need an accessible version of any of the presentations shown today,
please send an email request to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. When called to testify, individuals appearing before the subcommittee will remain muted until recognized by the chair to speak. Applicant teams will be recognized as group and called first. Members of the public will be called and recognized as panels in groups of up to four names at a time. When the chair recognizes you, your microphone will be unmuted. Please take a moment to check your device and confirm that the microphone is on before you begin speaking as there is a slight delay in the process of unmuting. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have additional testimony you would like the subcommittee to consider or if you have written testimony you would like to submit instead of appearing before the subcommittee today, you may email it to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number and or project name in the subject line of your email. During the hearing, council members with questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of your participant panel. Council members with questions will be announced in order as they raise their hands and Chair Moyo will recognize members to speak. Witnesses are requested to remain in the meeting until excused by the chair as council members may have questions. Finally, there will be pauses over the course of this meeting for various technical reasons as we work through various uh, technical issues. And we ask that you please be patient as we work through uh, any and all issues. Chair Moya will now continue with today's agenda items. Thank you, Arthur. Um, I now open the public hearing on the pre-considered LU items for the 1099 Webster Avenue rezoning proposal, uh, seeking a zoning map amendment and a zoning text amendment under ULIP numbers C210103, XMX, and N210104, uh, ZRX, and relating to property in Council Member Gibson's district in the Bronx. Uh, I now uh, will turn it over to Council Member uh, Gibson for some uh, brief remarks. Thank you, Chair Moya. I heard the emphasis on the brief part. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Chair, and good morning to all my colleagues. And thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. I'm Council Member Vanessa Gibson. I will be speaking briefly on in favor of land use application number 210103 ZMX 1099 Webster Avenue. This application has been submitted to the council by 1099 Webster Realty LLC. This development site is located at the intersection of Webster Avenue in my district between 166 and 167th Street, and it's about 60,000 square feet. Uh, I am excited at this potential opportunity to bring units of affordable housing, truly affordable housing, over two residential buildings in my community. Uh, this is Bronx Community Board 4, and the applicant has made a great effort to meet with the Housing and Land Use Committee, as well as the full general committee of Community Board 4. Um, and we are really excited at the opportunity to achieve both three bedroom apartments, two bedroom and one bedroom apartments, as well as a small portion of studios. We are recognizing formerly homeless families that really need truly permanent affordable housing. We also have an opportunity on the ground level for commercial retail space. There will be the temporary jobs provided uh, in the construction industry, working with Higher NYC and the MWBE Build Up Program, about 80 permanent jobs, uh, working with the local community for local hiring uh, provisions, as well as MWB provisions. And we're also talking to Local 32 BJ, uh, which we recognize as critical partners in this work to make sure that we can also achieve union wage jobs that provide stability for so many of our families. I'm very proud to work with this applicant who came to me over a year ago with the idea of transforming this area into a more residential community. This area is also surrounded by Webster houses, Butler houses, lots of commercial and retail, and a, a real assortment of businesses along the Webster Avenue corridor. I'm excited at the opportunity. We've met with Community Board 4, the Bronx Borough President's Office, and this project does have tremendous support because it really is truly affordable. And at a time when we are recovering from COVID-19, when we are recognizing in Bronx County that one in every four residents has lost their employment and their income, fallen behind in rent and struggled for basic necessities. We have to do everything possible as a council to provide, to invest in opportunities that create permanent affordable housing. Every New Yorker, every family should have the ability to live in safe, quality and affordable housing. And I believe that this project provides that opportunity for the residents of the Bronx and New York City and certainly local 
Bronx Community Board for. So I am very excited. I am happy to continue to work with this applicant and their partners because I do think this will be a great asset to our community in CB4. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I hope that was brief enough for you and I look forward to working with you and all of our colleagues in the council. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Gibson, for your remarks. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Um, and now, uh, Council, if you can please call the first panel um, for this item. The applicant panel for this item will include Adam Rothkrug, Land Use Council, as well as Ron Shulman and Mark Weprin, consultants uh, appearing on behalf of the applicant, Shiva Gomi, project architect, and Billy Shure appearing as the property owner. Uh, panelists, if you have not already done so, please accept the unmute request in order to begin to speak. Great. Uh, but before you begin, uh, Council, if you can please uh, administer uh, the affirmation. Panelists, please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions? Yes. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank Council. you. Thank yeah. you. But before you begin, Mark, uh, I'm sorry, just let me uh, quickly go through this. Uh, thank you. We have received your slideshow and uh, presentation for this proposal. Uh, when you are ready uh, to present it, please say so, and it will be displayed on the screen by our staff. Slides will be advanced when you say uh, next. Please note that there may be a slight delay in both the initial loading and the advancing of slides as a technical note for the benefit of the viewing public. If you need an accessible version of this presentation, please send an email request to landusetestimony at council.nyc.gov. And now uh, if the panelists would please uh, restate uh, your names, uh, organizations for the record, uh, you may begin. Great. Thank you very much, Chairman Moya. My name is Mark Weprin. I am an attorney with uh, Greenberg Traurig representing the applicant here today, Billy Schur. It's a pleasure to see you and the distinguished members of the Land Use Committee, as well as Council Member Gibson. Uh, we're excited, as, as she was, uh, for this project. It's 238 affordable units. As a matter of fact, it's part of the ELLA program, so it's extra low income and affordability. Um, we've had a, a, a very good reception from the community. We got approved by the community board, the borough president, and unanimously by city planning. And we've had the pleasure, as you can imagine, working with council member Gibson and her insisting that we accommodate families uh, in this project. So this is a terrific, uh, a terrific plan. Uh, the developer has a long history in the Bronx and in this community for, for decades. And I'm going to call on Adam Rothkrug, who is the zoning attorney, who is going to be the one to take us through the PowerPoint. Adam. Thank you, Mark. And you can put up our uh, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, first, I'd like to absolutely thank uh, Councilperson Gibson. I think she gave my presentation, but <laughs> I'll try to uh, go through it again, uh, as well as the uh, uh, staff of the city council, uh, technical staff in, in getting us prepared for this. Uh, the first slide. Uh, my name is Adam Rothkrug. I'm here from Rothkrug, Rothkrug Inspector on behalf of uh, Webster 1099 Realty LLC. Uh, next slide. In connection with uh, two applications, the zoning map amendment uh, to permit the affordable housing and a text change to create an MIH district affecting our pro client's property at 1099 Webster Avenue in the East Concourse uh, section of the Bronx. Next. The actions are designed to permit construction of two new residential buildings, uh, as noted, 100% affordable under the ELLA program, a total of 238 apartment units, uh, and the building will also include first floor commercial space and below grade parking. Next. The development site consists of 368 feet frontage along the west side of Webster Avenue between East 166th and East 167th streets by 100 feet in depth, uh, 36,800 square feet in area. The total area to be rezoned includes two additional lots uh, to the right, uh, indicated as project area here, that the applicant does not own or control. Uh, both are 100 by 100 sites. 
They will both be affected by the MIH uh, designation, uh, although uh, none of those owners have indicated any intention of moving forward with any uh, new construction uh, at the present time. Next. The site is currently zoned predominantly M11 with a small R71 strip in the rear and developed with a mix of open parking, auto repair shop and scrap metal uh, facility. The Schur family has owned the subject property for several decades and are longtime residents and property owners and previously manufacturers in the Bronx. Next. It's proposed to rezone the property to uh, R7X uh, C24 and to map an R MIH district over the property. The R7X district, uh, next. And actually, I think I'm one behind, so I think we could go to one more. The R7X zoning would permit construction of two residential buildings, a nine-story building uh, on the uh, left side of the diagram and an 11-story uh, building uh, on the right side uh, with a total of 221,000 square feet, 191,000 residential and approximately 30,000 square feet of commercial floor area. In addition, underground parking for 73 cars is pro proposed, which is actually more than double the 30 spaces required by the applicable zoning, which only applies to the commercial uses because uh, the building is 100% affordable and located in a transit district. While the commercial space has not been marketed yet uh, because the building is still a year or two away or two or three years away, uh, there is enough space to house a mix of local retailers as well as potentially drugstores, restaurants, medical facilities, as well as uh, daycare or community centers, which the community board indicated uh, uh, would be needed at this location. Next. The plans submitted are part of uh, uh, the plan submitted as part of the application reflect the development consisting of two buildings. I'm sorry, if you could just go back. I got ahead of myself. The corner building nine stories, 92 feet in height and the interior building 11 stories, 111 feet in height. Uh, below the 145 foot total height that would be permitted. Combined total of 238 units, uh, 90 units in the corner building, 148 units in the mid block building, as noted 100% affordable. The unit mix will include a limited number of studios along with primarily one, two and three bedrooms. And our architect Shiva Gomi of Offgang Architects and housing consultant Ron Schulman will speak in a little more detail uh, with regard to those aspects. The buildings include large indoor and outdoor recreation spaces with passive sitting areas, as well as uh, uh, areas for outdoor exercise. And the building will meet an enterprise green standard, 15% above the requirements of the energy code. It's anticipated the project will create about 350 temporary construction jobs at prevailing wage uh, because it's being done under the HPD and HUD programs uh, and H HPD and HDC, along with approximately 80 permanent jobs for the building operations and the retail space. Uh, we did receive uh, strong community support from Community Board 4, from the borough president, and uh, we have worked with the council person Gibson over an extended period of time. Uh, the community board requested that we focus on providing local jobs and M MBWE preferences. And we've already been in contact with uh, the Jerome Avenue Revitalization Collaborative uh, and uh, have opened a dialogue with them to make sure that they are intimately involved in at the time that we go to start construction to work with our contractors. Uh, we confirmed our commitment to work with HPD to ensure preference to local residents for housing. And the owner, Bill Shore, is a trustee of the local 32 BJ Pension Fund and advises that a agreement, formal agreement with them uh, has been signed or he is signing this, uh, this morning. The R7X district was selected after extensive review with the Bronx Office of City Planning as well as Councilperson Gibson. And actually she fought hard to try to get us a, a higher FAR, higher zoning district because uh, uh, she thought we, the area could handle it and the more affordable units, the better. But uh, this, is what we, 
this is where we ended. The buildings and the height, the density are consistent with Claremont Village, uh, which is the north of us, in which the buildings exceed 20 stories in height. And if you see on this diagram at the left-hand corner is the Volunteers of America building. And uh, to the right behind us is the Triborough Nursing Center, both of which are similar in height and larger and or larger than uh, this, the, our proposed building. The residential development is consistent with existing development in the area, which is mixed between residential, commercial, and automotive, but includes good access to public transportation, including buses along Webster and East 167th, the B&D train about a half mile to the west, and the near, nearby Melrose Metro North Station. There are several existing open spaces and playgrounds in the area uh, so that the uh, open space uh, will serve the uh, proposed uh, residents. I'll now turn the application over to our architect, Shiva Gomi of Offkang Architects, who can briefly uh, introduce the plans. Thanks, Adam. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for having us this morning. Um, go to the next slide, please. Uh, as Adam mentioned, the corner building is nine story high and it has 90 dwelling units. Um, the middle of the interior lot is 11 story building with 148 dwelling unit. We have a setback of um, 40 feet instead of required uh, 30 feet rear yard uh, to create an outdoor rec uh, area for the residents. Next, please. Um, this is the, um, the outdoor rec area and the indoor, the interior um, rec room for the residents. Uh, you can see we have uh, active and passive um, um, exercise area and, and like sitting area for the residents to have access. And um, as the interior uh, rec room, we have the laundry and space for the residents to have activities and programs in, inside the building. Next, please. Uh, this is the corner lot, um, outdoor and indoor rec area. Uh, again, we have um, passive and active um, space for the residents sitting and exercise along with a landscape. Uh, and for the interior, we have a program room and laundry room. Next, please. Um, as Adam mentioned, uh, we try to achieve more of um, two bedrooms and, and ones uh, and have fewer studios um, to, to accommodate more family um, residents in, the, in this building. Next week. And that was it. If you have any questions in terms of design, I'm available to answer. And now I'd like to introduce Ron Schulman, who is our affordable housing consultant. Thank you, Adam. And good morning, Mr. Chair, Council Member Gibson, and all committee members. Um, everybody said this is an Ella project. I want to point out a couple of uh, facts and figures for the committee members. So the rents will be between 27 and 77% of AMI based on household size and um, income. There will also be um, 60 permanent MIH units in the building because we're uh, opting for option number one under MIH. So that's 60 permanent housing units, although the project will be fully affordable for a long period of time. Uh, we'll also have housing for formerly homeless families, 36 apartments, which is 15% of the project. And the um, size of the units, as uh, council member Gibson pointed out, we're uh, shooting for 10% three bedrooms and 30% uh, uh, two bedrooms, so there'll be 40%, 40%, two and three bedroom apartments in this building complex. There's only 5% studios and then the remainder are one bedrooms. Under, under the ELLA program, what we try to do is try to provide housing for all different incomes and sizes of households and also for people who are um, perhaps wanna stay in the community and they make more than the old tax credit rents, they can earn up to 80% of the area median income, uh, young families, uh, keeping them in the neighborhood. So we're very excited to work with uh, the council, uh, council member Gibson and everybody here. If there's any questions, let us know. Uh, the project is an Ella and uh, short uh, management just completed another Ella on Creston Avenue and Burnside, which was 114 units. Thank you, Adam. Thanks. And finally, I'd just like to briefly introduce the uh, uh, owner principal uh, of the ownership of the property, uh, Billy Shure. 
Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, evaluating our, our proposal, and, and we're hopeful that uh, we can move this along in, in a couple of years from now have, have a completed building. Um, as was said, stated, my family's been involved in, in uh, going back the uh, 40s and 50s. My grandfather was a builder of buildings. Um, this particular property uh, came, came to us in the 60s. We had a manufacturing facility on 3rd Avenue and 167th Street. This property is a couple blocks away, and it, it supported um, that business. Um, that business left the Bronx in the early 2000s, and, and the property has been rented out uh, to, to you know, commercial uh, op operators of commercial businesses uh, in the local neighborhood. Um, you know, we made it through the difficult times of the 70s and 80s. Areas started coming back in the 90s, 2000s, Melrose Commons to the south. Um, and we think it's an, an appropriate size project and, and will be great for the neighborhood. Um, as Ron Shulman stated before, we, I just finished a, a project about a year and a half ago at uh, Creston Avenue and Burnside Avenue, 114 apartments, about 11,250 square feet of retail and, and a, a below grade parking garage for 40 cars. Um, and so this, this will be my, my second uh, project here in the Bronx and, and um, we're hopeful. So if you have any questions, certainly I'm happy to answer. Thank you. And that, uh, that concludes our formal presentation. Obviously, we're all available to answer any questions the council has. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, just a couple of quick questions uh, for you. Uh, you indicated uh, uh, the plans to develop the site under HPD and the Yellow program, and you uh, were just talking about it uh, a minute ago. Can you just provide one, one more time the sense of where this project stands in the pre-development process? Um, and when do you expect to close on HPD financing? Um, and then a couple more questions regard, uh, relating to that as well. So let's just start off with those two. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take the questions, Ron Shulman. So right now we're finishing the rezoning, as you know, uh, there's a long pipeline of projects at HPD and HDC. So um, we would be hopeful to get to a closing in the next year or two because there's such a long line. Um, that's the best we can predict at this time. Okay. Um, and that's in the pre-development process, correct? That's correct. But plans are being worked on. So the architects are going to start working on uh, from, from this phase into construction documents as we complete our rezoning. Okay. Um, and when do you expect to secure uh, all the agency approvals needed to begin construction and how long do you expect the construction to last? So the Department of Building approval um, runs concurrent when we go for financing approvals. Um, Shiva, I guess it's fair to say that takes a good nine months or so with DOB. She's trying to unmute. No, yep, hold on. Um, we'll, we'll, un we'll unmute. Hold on one second. There you go. Yes, um, nine months is it. That um, is accurate. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned this before in your presentation briefly, but the borough president um, had in his recommendations that he would like to see more of the two and uh, three bedrooms. What were the considerations that were made uh, on this in light of, of, of uh, his feedback? So actually the borough president uh, rec wanted us to have 10% three bedrooms uh, and we were at 9%. So it really involved uh, uh, being able to provide one more three bedroom. So we do not have any issue with being able to uh, modify the plans uh, uh, to meet that goal. And as Ron noted, uh, the, the percentage of two and three bedrooms is 40%, which is, uh, I, th I think a pretty good number from the applications that I, uh, similar applications that I listened to. So we were only one unit short on the borough president's recommendation. Okay. And then the community board recommendation included a number of conditions for approval, including the request that the contractor or subcontractor of this project uh, work with the community board to provide paid apprenticeships uh, for Bronx residents. Um, what work has been done to develop such a program? Yeah, so we don't have a contractor yet, uh, but 
obviously, uh, hopefully, uh, if this uh, is approved, that we'll, we'll reach that stage. But as I did say, uh, uh, the owner, Billy Shore, and the community board put us in touch with uh, uh, the Jerome Avenue Revitalization Collaborative that includes uh, the HOPE program and Jobs First. Uh, and uh, we've already been in touch with them and uh, we'll definitely, uh, with regard to potential training, apprenticeship programs, and uh, that will be uh, part of the requirement that we pass along to our uh, contractors, uh, that we are actively involved with those organizations. So uh, that dialogue is open and we'll have their guidance early on in, in the process. Okay, thank you. Um... And additionally, the community board indicated an interest in increasing the number of units set aside uh, for homeless families. Is this something that the developer can commit to? It's, it's something, I, it's, Adam, I'll take it. It's, yeah. it's something possible because we were committing to 15% formerly homeless, but uh, the city does have other programs that we can consider. Um, we will look into that, but we, we have to get it closer to financing to really figure out that answer. But we're committed to 15% formerly homeless. And the, the community's other concern was trying to make sure that those formerly homeless are uh, local community board residents and even some that have been displaced to other areas in the city. So uh, we have committed to working with uh, HPD uh, to ensure that, uh, again, we can keep uh, people that uh, are either in homeless in this community or were formerly in this community and would like to return. Uh, that uh, that they can uh, get a preference under, you know, whatever regulations or rules HPD applies. Okay, thank you. Um, just two more questions before I turn it over to Council uh, Member Gibson. Uh, what work uh, will be done to engage uh, and contract with MWBE firms on this project? So again, uh, Billy, I don't know whether you want to answer that, but uh, uh, the answer is, uh, uh, aside from the uh, requirements inherent in some of the programs that we'll be involved in, this is obviously uh, uh, an issue that the community feels strongly about, and uh, and I think we share their concern and uh, preference to use uh, local uh, local contractors and local suppliers and uh, uh, from the MBWE pool. So uh, that's, uh, I think that's kind of a given in, in today's world and projects. And we certainly have no issue with, you know, following those guidelines. Um, and last question, uh, what commitments have been made uh, to relocate the existing commercial uh, tenants at that site? I guess I can take that. I, I, I'm familiar with the, I know these people, the one fellow's been there, I don't know, 25 or 30 years. Um, and so we would assist them in relocating. I'm not sure uh, the machine shop is going to stay in business uh, and relocate. He may, he may ultimately, uh, he's a, a, an older fellow, good guy. Um, but we, we've extended ourselves and we'd be willing to, to work with them and engage, uh, you know, put them in contact with, with uh, brokers. We're familiar with space in the borough and, and, and efforts to try to help them relocate. Um, they, they're all they all currently on month to month leases. They 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 um, they haven't had many increases in a number of years as we've been planning this project. Um, you know we're, we're trying not to. Uh, we understand they're going to be displaced and certainly we offer if their businesses uh, fit what we're doing to, to return. Although they're they're auto related, so I don't know that that would be the case. But um, but we certainly are willing to work with them to help them try to relocate. And, maintain their business. Great. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's it for me. I want to uh, now turn it over to uh, Council Member Gibson uh, for questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair Moya. And again, good morning, gentlemen. I appreciate, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you coming before the subcommittee to talk about this very important project. And, you know, just based on Chair Moya's questions around community involvement, community engagement, local hiring, MWBE provisions, the, uh, the deep affordability, the set-asides for formerly homeless families, um, all of the meetings that we've had, I, I really think that we've come to a good place. And, and certainly I always want to continue to push because I always wanna maximize uh, all the opportunities. Um, so I just want to confirm, you have been able to achieve the 10% of three bedroom units in, in both of these buildings in the total number of units? 
Yeah, so we haven't actually filed plans, but the answer is yes, there, there will not be any issue uh, achieving the 10% three bedrooms. Okay, and then on the, the set aside, the minimum, uh, of course, is 15%. Um, the possibility of that being increased is, is likely or, or not? Uh, Council Member Gibson, it could be increased under um, some recent programs with the city. For example, one of our projects is accepting FEPS uh, tenants, um, you know, under, because HDC and HPD reached out to us to house more formerly homeless uh, people or homeless people. So as we get closer to financing, we can consider that. Okay, that's good. Um, and I'll still continue to work with you as well. So you mentioned the Jerome Avenue Revitalization uh, Collaborative. Uh, we just launched the JARC a few weeks ago and I'm excited about the work ahead. It is a combination of both community boards four and five and a number of different uh, community organizations like WEDCO and others. So I'm wondering, um, I would like the opportunity for you to continue to work with them in terms of what partnerships we could provide for a lot of their clients and students. So an organization like WEDCO has youth programs where young people could potentially have an opportunity to get into some of the apprenticeship um, programs that may be available. So do you see that opportunity presenting itself at some point? Yeah, so uh, again, we've already, uh, Billy uh, Sure, the owner has already had a couple conversations with them. And, and let me say this, that, uh, it's a given that we will uh, use have them involved in this project, but I think that in bringing uh, uh, Billy to these organizations, because of all of his history and connections in various real estate boards uh, in the Bronx, I, I think that he's going to be a valuable partner way beyond this project for them. Uh, and uh, you know, I think the initial conversations have already been uh, productive and. In, in you know getting them started and getting Billy involved and uh, I think they'll get more than again just involvement in this project I think uh, this will be a nice connection okay great and forgive me if this question was already asked but um, can you just provide an overview of the breakdown of the AMIs are we going as low as 27 percent all the way up to 80 percent AMI Yes, it's Ron Schulman, council member. We're gonna be um, going from those tiers, as you mentioned, 27, all the way up to 77% of AMI. The final mix will be determined as we get closer to financing, but we anticipate having um, all those rental tiers covered in between so that we don't miss people. Um, the city generally likes uh, fewer tiers because it's easier for marketing, but we always like to have uh, all those tiers covered, 27, 37, 47, 57. So, you know, we want everybody to have a chance to live in the building and we will be covering that. So to answer your question, 15% uh, homeless, then there will be 10% at 27, 37, 47, 57. We're anticipating 20% at 67 and around 25% at 77. So it's a pretty even mix across the board uh, based on size of uh, unit and income and rent. Um, we'll fine tune it as we go and we'll be in contact with your office as we get closer to, you know, this real marketing plan. Okay. And under the uh, current FAR guidelines, are these the same uh, configurations that uh, the Sarah Ella program provide on the HPD's term sheets today? So that hasn't changed, right? Are you talking about the size of the units or? Yes. I'm, I'm talking about unit size. Correct. Yeah, the correct. unit size, Shiva can answer that question. Shiva? Yes, the unit size, um, it's within the, the requirements for Ella. Okay. Unit. Yes. Okay, so in your presentation, I'm looking at these beautiful pictures from 2028 Creston Avenue. So is this a similar of, of what the apartments will look at, at like at 1099? Oh, uh work hard on making nice apartments over there. We'd like to duplicate that provided the economics uh, works out and, and um, but and I think we may even upgrade a couple of things at the county. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, and in terms of the, the commercial ground level retail, uh, just talk to me quickly about some of the amenities that you're going to offer uh, internally for the residents and families of both buildings, but also potential opportunities at bringing more commercial retail uh, diversity along Webster Avenue. I mean, we've talked extensively about some of the existing 
programs, uh, school age children programs, uh, UPK, 3K, daycare center, medical facility, et cetera. Uh, so do you have any ideas and have you started talking to any potential partners? I mean, I'm happy to respond. We're, we're, we're a little premature because we don't, we don't have our, our, we're not even approved with our zone change yet. Um, but those are definitely the, I have a daycare uh, operator at the other site. Um, and, and I have no issues with the, with the kinds of uh, businesses you, you suggested. But certainly the goal would be to get uh, businesses that support the local neighborhood. Uh, um, so, so businesses can thrive. And so the people that are moving into the building and then they're in the surrounding community to get services that they're probably not getting as close uh, to where they live now um, in the new building. And so, yeah, we are, whether it's a medical provider or a daycare provider, uh, definitely something that can support the neighborhood. Okay, I think great. I think thirty thousand square feet is a is a nice area that provides sizable, uh, right. an opportunity for multiple uses. Okay, um, my final question just relates to the partnerships with existing uh, hiring programs like Hire NYC. If I remember correctly, Hire NYC is the program that's overseen by the Department of Small Business Services, and just generally over the years, uh, we've been a little critical of some of the data that's been produced in terms of the ability to really get New Yorkers on a lot of these jobs. So in addition to that, I'm wondering, there are other apprenticeship programs like Pathways to Apprenticeship. We call them P2A, Non-Traditional Employment for Women, uh, Hard Hats to Helmets. There are a number of other uh, partners that I'd like you to begin talking to. Um, I don't want to fully rely on Hire NYC. I've not been shown data that is satisfactory to me to date. Um, and I do think that we always have to look for new opportunities and new partners uh, and the MWBE build up program. So would you entertain talking to other partners that can help in providing the local hiring opportunities that we desperately need? Certainly, certainly would. Uh, once I once I select a, a, uh, a contractor, um, these are things I've, I'm certainly going to bring up there and the conditions of, of uh, you know our project going forward, and and they will have to incorporate that into into their hiring um, and how they staff up the job. Okay, great. Thank you so much uh, again. Thank you, gentlemen and and ladies. I will continue to work with you uh, during my time here in the council as this project moves forward. And if there are any changes, uh, certainly reach out to us. And I neglected in my opening, but I really want to acknowledge and recognize the land use division, uh, Katie Sullivan and Amy Levitan and Raju Mann and the entire team for their work, for being a part of all the meetings that we've held over the last year and a half. Uh, and certainly thank you, Chair Moya, for your leadership and having today's hearing. And I look forward to working with all of you as we provide affordable housing in the Bronx and beyond. I won't be selfish. I realize I have to share with New York City, uh, but the Bronx has been hit very hard by COVID. And I'm being very deliberate about my priorities this year, about making sure that we push every project that will provide opportunity and access for children and families and formerly homeless families in particular, which I represent many of. So to me, this is a project worthy of consideration and support. Um, I think a lot of work has been done to put into this proposal. Um, it does not go unrecognized. And certainly if we can do more, let's do it. If we can get more three bedrooms, I'm okay with that uh, because three bedroom apartments are hard to come by and these families do not move. They are consistent and they will not leave your building. So three bedroom apartments, I think in this environment are always great uh, to market and to promote and to provide. And so I thank you all and I look forward to working with you. Thanks, Chair Moya. Thank you, Council Member. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you again you. for all your help. Um, thank you. I now want to invite uh, my colleagues to ask questions. Um, if we have any uh, colleagues that have any questions uh, I'm going to turn it over to Arthur to see if we have any council members who want to ask questions. Yes, Chair. Council Member Ayala has a hand raised for question. Yep. Yeah, I think my question is is more along the lines of you know what the 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 com the community um, the borough president's office uh, was concerned about is, is the number of three units, like three bedroom units. So I'm wondering. Uh, was there some sort of analysis that, that, you know, I guess expressed that there was a higher demand for smaller units in this area? Because 
I mean, we have so many families, low income families that are looking for three bedroom apartments in, you know, in the city throughout the city, but most specifically in the Bronx. So I just wonder why, um, why there wasn't more effort to develop more three bedrooms in this project. Well, there was an effort to uh, provide a good mix. And uh, as I said, the borough president had requested that we uh, reach 10% and we were actually at 9%. So uh, we will be able to provide uh, to meet the borough president's goal of uh, 10% three bedrooms. And we're also at 30% two bedrooms. So two and three bedrooms combined, we're at 40%, which is, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say a lot higher than uh the vast majority of projects uh, uh, that come before the council on rezonings. It is, I, I, and I, it's something that's that's been kind of weighing on my, you know, my conscience because I don't, I'm not understanding where um, it's coming from. So I don't, I don't understand if it's because it's more financially feasible to develop these projects with smaller units, and you you get more bang for your buck because you're able to get to develop more units that way. Um, and I appreciate this project. I appreciate the AMIs being, you know. So balance, I appreciate a lot of things about it. I just, you know, I wonder, and this is not a, an issue specific to this particular project, but just overall, uh, a lot of developers are coming, you know, before this body with uh, with proposals for um, developments that call for more, um, you know, uh, studios, one bedrooms and two bedrooms. And I know for a fact that we have a huge demand for three bedroom apartments. So I'm just trying to figure out what is, you know what is the, what's determining that? Like, how are you? How are these decisions being made? Um, and is it a financing issue, or is it just you know we made it? We did an analysis of this community, and we found that there's a larger demand for two bedrooms than there is for three. Or it could be a combination of both. But you know, I'm I'm just seeking to understand. Council member, I'll take the question. It's Ron Schulman, Best Development okay. Group. We this is a family neighborhood, and we feel uh, as Council Member Gibson feels, as many two and three bedroom apartments. Um, we're providing. Uh, we only have five percent studios, so this is not uh, in our marketing research a studio neighborhood. But there are people who do need studios, so there's a few. There's twelve studio apartments. Um, a lot of people would look at this project perhaps differently and try to get more units out of the building. That's that's a fact. Um, but Billy is committed to family housing. When we built the project over Creston Avenue, he had the same mix: very large apartments. He had two and three two and three bedroom apartments and a lot of the two bedrooms had two bathrooms. So he builds quality housing. Um, his family has been in the Bronx for decades mm -hmm. and they own and manage their own properties. And this is the design that he wants for this project. Um, if somebody else came in, they might propose 250 units, but Ron, this is where we are now. The two Ron, yeah. Ron, the council member, I think, I don't think he's talking about this project necessarily directly, but maybe with your expertise, you can give her an idea of when people develop in general, not just us, you know, where do they get the numbers from and what, what are small units more marketable? Well, yeah, that's a good point, um, Mark. A lot of developers will look at this site and try to increase the number of units, okay? So they would mm -hmm. use maybe 10% studios and they wouldn't have three bedrooms. So they would wind up, and then Shiva can tell me how many maximum units we could get in this project. It would be more than 238. but. We feel strongly that this is the right mix for the neighborhood so there won't be a marketing problem. If we put in, and HPD allows us to put in 25% studios, we wouldn't want to do that here. We don't think that would be marketable. It wouldn't be sustainable. And then Billy would have turnover like crazy because those are tough apartments to keep occupied. He wants families. He wants one, two, and three bedroom predominantly to manage, which is his uh, bread and butter. That's what he has in his other buildings. So, um, Yes, you can get more bang for the buck with smaller units. It's true. You could you could increase the number of uh, the, the subsidy that the city gets or gives, gives to the project and perhaps more revenue. Um, we've run the numbers and the numbers work at this at this mix of apartments. Okay, so it, just, a, just a quick question and again, excuse my ignorance, but I'm also learning as I go. Um, so if the subsidy was higher, would there be a possibility to develop more three bedrooms citywide? Um, projects? That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, I just wonder because I'm, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to put our, you know, I mean, and, and I think it's a great project. And again, this is like a larger conversation, but I just, I know for a fact that in the Bronx, 
And, you know, communities like mine, you know, in East Harlem and South Bronx, like there's a huge demand for three bedrooms. And we're not, we don't really have a lot of, of um, real estate, right? We don't have the land uh, to develop right now. Um, so we're kind of at the mercy oftentimes, you know, of, of property owners that are looking, you know, to uh, maybe sell or redevelop their properties. Um, and so I, I want to really make sure that we're being purposeful here and that we're not, um, you know, forgetting about, you know, that, that there's a demand, right? That there's a demand that people are being outpriced, that we have families even in shelter right now that are large families and they, they need larger units. So I, I appreciate it. And I thank you, Billy, for, you know, coming back to the community. Um, again, I appreciate a lot of, you know, the elements in this, in this particular project, just curious about, you know, the three bedrooms. And I think that for, you know, developers coming before the, uh, the council, I think that, you know, it's just, it's something that they should also be aware of, right? Depends on the, on the community. I, 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 I like to look at what the community looks like, uh, what the makeup is and what the demand is. Um, and some communities don't require that much, but the Bronx specifically, we do, we do, we need it. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Council Member Allen. Uh, council, do we have any other council members with uh, questions? No. No, Chair. Okay. Um, there being no further questions, uh, the applicant panel uh, is excused. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the 1099 Webster Avenue rezoning application? If there are any members of the public who wish to testify on the 1099 Webster Avenue rezoning proposal, please press the raise hand button now and the meeting will briefly stand at ease while we uh, check for members of the public. Chair Moya, I see no other members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Okay, there being uh, no members of the public who wish to testify on the 1099 uh, Webster Avenue rezoning proposal under ULERPS number C210103 ZMX and N210104 uh, ZRX, the public hearing on these pre-considered LU items is now closed and the item is laid over. I now open the public hearing on pre-considered LU items for the 50-25 uh, Barnett Avenue rezoning proposal, uh, seeking a zoning map amendment and a zoning text amendment under ULERP number C200243 ZMQ and N200244 ZMQ and relating to uh, and relating to property in council member Van Bramer's district in Queens. Uh, council, if you can, please call the first panel for this item. The applicant panel for this item will include Michael Wadman, Sarah Elmore, Douglas Hanau, all for uh, the Phipps houses, as well as Herbert Mandel, project architect, and John McNally, project planner. Panelists, if you have not already done so, please accept the unmute request in order to begin speak. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, before you begin, uh, thank you. Um, Council, if you could please uh, administer uh, the affirmation. Panelists, please raise your right hands. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, before you begin, I just want to read uh, a quick procedural note here. Um, we are in receipt of your si slideshow presentation for this proposal. When you are ready to present the slideshow, please say so, and it will be displayed on the screen by our staff. Slides will be advanced when you say next. Please note that there may be a slight delay in both the initial loading and the advancing of slides. 
Uh, once again, anyone who requires an accessible version, uh, version of this uh, presentation uh, may send an email request to land use testimony at citycouncil.nyc.gov. And now if the panelists would please restate your names and organizations for the record, you may begin. Sarah Elmore, Phipps Houses. Michael Wadman, Phipps Houses. Douglas and John McNally. Uh, John McNally, Philip Abib and Associates. Did we get everybody? I think Herb, could you? I, I did. <clears throat> I unmuted, but I will. Uh, I am unmuted, I believe, and I and and. Uh, I'm the project architect. My name is Robert Mandel. Thank you. You may begin with your presentation now. Thank you. Okay, uh, if you can just bring the presentation slides up, please. Thank you. Okay. As I stated before, my name is Sarah Elmore, and I'm the director of planning at Phipps Houses. And uh, we are here today to discuss a proposal for a new mixed use development containing affordable housing and community facility space at 5025 Barnett Avenue. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the site is located, as I described, at 5025 Barnett Avenue in the Sunnyside neighborhood in Queens Community District 2. And in order to facilitate the proposed development, we are requesting a zoning map amendment to rezone the project site from M11 to R6A and a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area at the project site. Um, we have, we entered ULERP October 5th, uh, Queens Community Board 2 voted to approve the project on December 3rd, 2020. A Queensborough president recommended to approval on January 6th, 2021. And the City Planning Commission voted to approve the applications on March 3rd, yesterday, 2021. Next slide, please. The proposed project site is located within the Sunnyside neighborhood in Community District 2 in Queen, on a block that is bounded by the Long Island Railroad right away to the north, the prolongation of 52nd Street to the east, Barnett Avenue to the south and the prolongation of 50th Street to the west. The site is currently zoned M11, which permits light industrial uses and community facility uses, but does not permit residential uses. Um, residential uses are located to the south of the project in range in heights up to six stories, including the site directly to the south, which is the Phipps Sunnyside Garden Apartments, um, which are uh, apartment complex owned by us. Next slide, please. The proposed project site is currently occupied by a surface parking lot with approximately 223 parking spaces. The site is fenced off, has no sidewalk or active uses, and results in a streetscape that is uninviting and not pedestrian friendly. Next slide, please. The proposed development will consist of a mixed use building with approximately 167 affordable housing units, approximately 5,300 square feet of community facility space, residential amenities, and a 6,000 square foot outdoor recreation terrace. The building will rise to a height of six stories on the eastern and westernmost ends, and up to an overall maximum height of seven stories. The proposed development will also have 170 accessory parking spaces, of which 100 level would be made available for public use. A 15 foot sidewalk with plantings and a double corridor of trees would also be provided in connection with the proposed development to make this street more inviting and pedestrian friendly. Next slide, please. The unit distribution of the proposed development will consist of a mix of one, two, and three bedroom units. And uh, the affordability levels will have a, between ranges of 40 to 80% of AMI. Um, so 40% of, 15% uh, of the units would be provided at 40% of AMI. 15, another 15% 15 at 
another 15% at 60% of AMI, another 15% at 70% of AMI, and 40% of the units are proposed at 80% of AMI. Next slide, please. On this slide is a comparison of affordability levels that were initially proposed when we entered ULERP uh, versus a new proposal that provides deeper affordability. Uh, in response to uh, comments and concerns from the community, as well as based on our conversations with Council Member Van Bramer, and we have committed to um, capping the highest income level at 80% of AMI. And as you can see here, uh, we have removed the 110% of AMI band and added an 80% of AMI band and as well as a 70% of AMI band. Next slide, please. This is uh, just the ground floor plan where you can see the community facility space, uh, as well as the intended parking in the rear of the building, uh, lobby, as well as a small open space to the uh, west of the community facility space. Next slide, please. This is a, a image of the second floor plan where you can see the 6,000 square foot outdoor recreation terrace, as well as some of the residential amenities, which includes a kid's playroom, community room, lounge, laundry, and fitness room. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a typical floor plan of the upper levels of the building. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a rendered image of uh, what we are proposing for the outdoor terrace. As you can see, there's an area for seating, a kids play area, and general passive sitting area, as well as uh, multiple plantings. Next slide, please. Here is an image of uh, the frontage of the proposed development. As you can see, the building articulation um, helps to create variety and visual interest in the proposal. Um, you can also see on the bottom right hand side of this image, there are uh, masonette units on the ground floor, which would have their own private entrances. Uh, you can also see the entrance to the lobby. Next slide, please. Here is a uh, closer up image of the, the lobby area as well as some of the masonette units. Next slide, please. Uh, here is an image of the project site uh, as it sits currently looking east on Barnett. Next slide, please. And here is that same site, uh, site image with the proposed development um, in the picture. Next slide, please. And based on input we received from the community regarding our 2016 proposal, uh, we have reduced the overall height of the building from a maximum height of 10 stories uh, to seven stories. We have increased the amount of space dedicated for community facility uses, increased the amount of parking from 101 parking spaces to 170 parking spaces, uh, we are also committed to using uh, unionized maintenance staff. Uh, we do have a signed development agreement with 32 VJ. Uh, and we have also deepened the levels of affordability. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can see on this slide, in the 2016 proposal, 80% uh, of all units were, we were proposing that 80% of all units be affordable to households at 100% of AMI or above with the remaining 20% of units being affordable to households at 50% of AMI. Our current proposal has 100% uh, of the units now below 80% of a at 80% of AMI or below. Next slide, please. And uh, since 2017, uh, Phipps Houses has invested over $3 million for improvements to the Sunnyside Garden Apartments uh, these include roof replacements, repairs to the building facade, repainting and repairing the fire escape, a garden update that includes tree pruning, new plantings and slate work to repair the pathways, lobby painting, elevator, elevator cab renovations, 
uh, new historically appropriate signage, new furniture for the social hall and additional bike storage. And Phipps Houses is also planning to make additional capital repairs in 2021, including uh, asphalt replacement, additional landscaping, slate work to repair the pathways, tree pruning and planting, hallway planting, painting, and improving the irrigation system. Next slide, please. And based on concerns uh, that we heard during the public review process, Phipps Houses also proposes the Sunnyside Garden and Apartments Improvement Plan uh, to address maintenance concerns, uh, including the hiring of a new porter, which we have already have a new full-time hired uh, porter on staff, expanding the extermination services, uh, which we have already begun um, increasing the communications with the tenants association from quarterly meetings to monthly meetings, which has also already begun, excuse me. Uh, we also plan to, as requested by the community board, uh, complete annual tenant satisfaction surveys by a third party and annual apartment inspections. Um, then next slide, please. And uh, just a final image of the proposed development. And we'd like to thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to our proposal and we welcome any questions. Thank you. Um, just a couple of questions here. Um, one, what is the, the current status of the Sunnyside Gardens uh, apartments improvement plan? Uh, we are completely on schedule with all of the 30 and 60 day commitments, uh, which included the hiring of the new staff, providing out uh, information about best practices for garbage disposal and um, that we have cleaned the laundry room. We have added that also onto the regular maintenance schedule as requested. Uh, we have begun the, uh, the extermination services for each of the um, the units, um, we are we are on, on schedule. We have also achieved some of the ninety day requirements, which were cleaning out uh, the irrigation systems. Uh, we will continue to monitor that, however, and see how uh, continued rainfalls and other precipitation impact that. Okay, so as of today, those all those targets have been met. Correct. Okay, thank you. Um, and can you confirm that the, the applicant plans to meet the community board's condition to restrict uh, incomes to 90% AMI or below? And I know you touched upon that in your presentation, um, but just want to get it on record. Correct. Yes, we are committed to 80% uh, actually after discussions with Council Member Van Bramer of AMI or, or below. Great. Thank you. Um, what kind of uh, sustainability measures? will be included in the project? Uh, we will meet uh, the building code requirements and uh, Herb, could you touch on that a little bit more? We, we will uh, meet the requirements of enterprise green communities with uh, uh, all the systems in the building. Okay. One and other thing is there, there will be solar panels as well on the roof providing some of the electricity. Okay, thank you. Um, how do you respond to the borough president's recommendation uh, that this should be at a 30% goal of hiring MWBE businesses, um, local labor and small contractors for this project uh, during and after uh, construction? What about his, and what about his recommendations that the developer should also engage uh, local organizations for job readiness training and capacity building programs to raise opportunities uh, for area residents and businesses? We have committed to 30% of the MWBE for the HPD uh, subsidy costs. And we also will be registering the project in uh, Higher NYC. Uh, we are also happy to reach out to local organizations uh, for this in the future. We have not yet have a contractor on, on board. Uh, but this is something that we are happy to work with that uh, moving forward. Okay. And how do you respond to the borough president's recommendation 
that the community facility space should be provided at a discounted rate uh, to make it affordable for community groups or organizations that are providing services uh, to the neighborhood. Uh, we accept that recommendation entirely. The community facility base uh, space will be at a below market rate and we'll work to find a, a, a good local group to occupy the space. Okay, thank you. That's, that's it for me. Um, I wanna turn to Arthur to see if there's any of my colleagues who have any questions for this panel. No, Chair, I see no members with uh, questions for this panel. Okay, thank you. Uh, there being no further questions, the applicant panel is excused. Uh, thank you for your testimony today. Uh, now, Council, uh, are there any members of the public who wish to testify on the 50-25 uh, Barnett Avenue rezoning application? Yes, Chair, we do have a number of public speakers uh, registered to testify for this item. Uh, for members of the public here to testify, please note again that witnesses will generally be called in panels of four. If you are a member of the public who has signed up to testify on the 50-25 Barnett Avenue rezoning proposal, please stand by when you hear your name being called and prepare to speak when the chair says that you may begin. Please also note that once all panelists in your group have completed their testimony, you will be removed from the meeting as a group and the next group of speakers will be introduced. Once removed, participants may continue to view the live stream broadcast uh, of this meeting at the council website. We will now hear from the first panel, which will include Jeanette Remack, Herbert Reynolds, Brent O'Leary, and Mary Chang. The first speaker will be Jeanette Remack, who will be followed by Herbert Reynolds. Time starts now. Sunnyside resident, uh, I do not agree with this proposal at all. You are blocking Sunnyside in. You are just overstuffing us. You are infringing on an infrastructure in this particular area in Sunnyside Woodside that's already strained to the hilt. We don't have enough buses, uh, transportation. We don't have subway service that's reliable. We don't have uh, parking. We don't have streets that you can get up and down without having to wait for hours on end. Um, we also have a situation where Sunnyside has been built in to the point that our air is now being affected because of the stagnation. We no longer get that nice breeze coming in off the river. Um, it just seems that if you look at Queens Boulevard, you will see numerous new housing coming up everywhere you look. There are little pocket houses coming up all over Queens Boulevard because CB2 changed the zoning. You've hurt our business area, CB2. Um, we've lost the 46th Street uh, due to a fire and to the fact that uh, we have a rather ugly um sex shop that is now on 48th street and queens boulevard it came back again we thought we got rid of it so in essence i don't agree with this um you're bringing more people into an overstuffed area that cannot support it thank you thank you uh and just a quick reminder to members of the public uh you will be given two minutes to speak um, and please don't begin until the sergeant at arms uh has started the clock um so i believe herbert you're you're up next Time starts now. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? I'm, hi, I'm Herbert Reynolds. For the past 35 years, I've lived half a block from Phipps Garden Apartments in Sunnyside Gardens. And for 17 years, I've been active on our Sunnyside Gardens Preservation Alliance. Within the Sunnyside Gardens Historic District, there are half a dozen ensembles of rental apartment buildings besides the one managed by Phipps Houses. To my knowledge, none has ever been operated by a not-for-profit except for Phipps Houses. Taking all the other rental buildings as a whole, I have to tell you that we've never at any point in decades 
heard anywhere near the level of complaints, nor the seriousness of complaints that we hear from our neighbors who are tenants of Phipps houses. Please see the PDFs that we've submitted in evidence containing photographs and statements that our organization has received. The crux of the matter before you is whether to place more tenants under the care of Phipps houses. Your ethical public servants, I know, and it seems to me that no conscientious person would tolerate the degree of indifference or antagonism that's been shown to these tenants if you lived in these apartments or if a friend or family member did. I trust you will vote no to this proposed rezoning. Thank you. Thank you, Herbert. Thank you for your testimony today. Next speaker will be Brent O'Leary, followed by Mary Chang. Time starts now. I want to thank the uh, subcommittee for hearing us. We really appreciate your time. Um, as you know from the history, uh, this was brought up before in the neighborhood. And when the zoning was first proposed, it actually unveiled the subpar conditions that were going on at this development. Uh, it really is deplorable. The mice infestation no repair is being done. Uh, so they were given a chance to correct these and they have not. Uh, the conditions have gotten worse. I've been there with the tenants. The tenants are, do not want this. Uh, they're these deplorable conditions and they're asking that we go against it. Um, and this has been proven. We, they were just, Phipps was just rated the 11th worst landlord in New York City. So this is not someone, if you approve this, they will have no incentive to correct their behavior or to make these improvements. Once this is approved, you know, the, the horse is out of the gate. So I don't think we should be rewarding the 11th worst landlord in the city with a lucrative deal. Um, also, this is chasing out the small business. We're trying to be, we're trying to recover from this COVID pandemic. And Steve Madden, the largest, uh, uh, employer in the area said he will move out if the zoning happens. So we are hurting the neighborhood in many ways. So I ask you, I don't think the affordable housing that is given is of the level or truly affordable that we should be rewarding this. So I ask you on behalf of the tenants and behalf of the people in this neighborhood to please reject this uh, until Phipps can show that they will be a responsible landlord. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. The next and last speaker on this panel will be Mary Chang. Time starts now. Hi, uh, my name is Mary Chang and I've lived in this neighborhood for almost 50 years and absolutely love the Phipps complex. It was something to aspire to live there. But in the last couple of years, it has really descended into something that I used to see when I worked in the Upper East Side and seeing the neglected NYCHA projects there. Um, for a company that would allow such a beautiful complex to go down to the level that it is now, and now that they're seeking approval, are handing out these, these, these promises that they will write what they allow to go wrong, I mean, is unconscionable. I cannot support uh, giving uh, this project to, to such a, a company. The other thing is having a residential a development at where it's proposed, I think is ludicrous being right next to the Long Island Railroad. You have this beautiful proposed looking outdoor pavilion but yet the Long Island Railroad is going to be racketing over there constantly, day and night. And even though I think part of the proposal is they're going to have soundproof windows, that doesn't, some, at some point you have to open up your windows. And when that happens, all that pollution from, from the railroad is going to come in. I don't think it's a healthy, from a health standpoint, I don't think it's even a good place to, to build residential housing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony today. Chair, that was the last speaker on this panel. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you for your testimony. Is there any council members uh, with any questions uh, for the panelists? No, Chair, I see no members with uh, questions. Okay, thank you very much for your testimony today. The panel is now excused. Uh, we can uh, now call up the next panel. The next panel will include Mark Espinoza and Rosamond Giannoutsas. Mark Espinoza will be the first speaker will be followed by Rosamond Giannoutsas. Time starts now. Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Mark Espinoza and I'm a member of 32BJ. I would like to thank the chairs, members of the committee and local council member, Jimmy Van Bramer for holding this hearing today. I am here on behalf of 85,000 building service workers 32BJ represents in New York City and to express our support for this rezoning. We are pleased that the developer for this project, Phipps Houses, has made a credible commitment to the prevailing wage for the future building service workers at this site. This new development will bring new good jobs and permanently affordable housing to Queens in a time we need it most. Providing apartments at a range of prices for low income and working class families as we move forward from this pandemic and economic crisis is imperative to rebuilding New York City. This, <laughs> I'm sorry. This affordable housing and commitment to good prevailing wage job will give opportunity for upward mobility, security, and dignity to working class families. 32BJ supports responsible developers who, de who invest in the communities where they build. 32BJ has more than 3,000 members who live or work in Community District 2. We know that this development will continue to uphold the industry standard and provide opportunities for working families to thrive in Sunnyside. Lastly, we would like to thank local council member Jimmy Van Bramer for supporting good jobs within his district. On behalf of 32BJ SEIU, I respectfully urge you to approve this project. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And Mark, I mean, you're setting the bar high. Uh, giving a speech, testifying in public, feeding the baby. <laughs> Is that the new technique? You, 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 you keep them nice and quiet. That, that's great. <laughs> thank, thank you, Mark. You. Thank you. The next speaker will be Rosamond Giannoutsos. Time starts now. Uh, yes, um, my name is Rosamond Giannoutsos and I am in support of the Barnett Avenue proposal. For 52 years, I've lived a half a block from the proposed affordable housing on Barnett Ave and across the street from the Sunnyside Garden Apartments operated by the developers, the Phipps organization. I would like to correct the claim that Phipps is on a worst landlord's list. This is misleading. The Phipps organization is not on the public advocate's worst landlord's list. I am confident that the city planning uh, has determined that the impact on the area's infrastructure is manageable. As a neighbor and a citizen, I am eager to have more affordable housing in our area. We really need it desperately. This project will displace no one. The existing use, a commercial parking lot, is no great asset to the community. And I'd also like to uh, correct the comment on the issue of a nearby business which claims that they rely on this lot for their employees. However, I believe this argument is specious. They have ample room on site uh, to put elevated parking devices in. Uh, every single unit finally in this project has some level of affordability. Many will be deeply affordable and I look forward to having some new neighbors. Please vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalind. I just had to say that the, the two witnesses brought out the big guns here, the baby and the dog. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for your testimony. You're welcome. Okay, that was the last speaker for this panel. And I currently see no members with questions for the panel. Okay, thank you. The, the panel is now excused. Thank you for your testimony today. Uh, Council, if you can please call up uh, the next panel. The next panel will include Eileen Con excuse me, Eileen Connolly Goodwin, Gerald Perrin, Margaret Perrin, 
and Elizabeth Reynolds. The first speaker will be Eileen Connolly Goodwin, followed by Gerald Parent. Time starts now. Eileen Connolly Goodwin. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Eileen. Hi, time I'm starts sorry. now. I'm really technologically challenged. No, How are you? <laughs> no worries. Take your time. Whenever um, you're ready. Well, I did have my cat, but he ran away when I was trying to get the phone ready. <laughs> so, so please, like, I have a beautiful cat. I'll send you pictures. Please. Um, I'm Eileen. I live on 39th Avenue. Um, I live. I was a resident of, in the Phipps for 12 years. Uh, back in the 70s, I thought the Phipps was a great place to live, but my family was getting larger, and we bought a house directly across the street. Um, since the third rail of the Long Island Railroad went in, practically in my backyard, I really feel that it's not fair to expect anybody to live even closer to the Long Island Railroad than I do. Um, behind my house, I have a decent sized backyard. Then there's the Sunnyside Gardens Park, including the tennis courts, then Barnett Avenue, and then a business, and then the Long Island Railroad. Please be reasonable. Don't expect people to have a horrible quality of life living on top of the Long Island Railroad. It's just not fair. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Eileen. The next speaker will be Gerald Perrin, who will be followed by Margaret Perrin. Time starts now. Can you hear me? Yes. I hear you. The Phipps Sunnyside Garden Apartments across the street from the proposed site has been my home for all of my 86 years. I am the longest living resident in the complex, as well as a founder and co-president of Phipps Garden Apartments Tenant Association. I have a long history with Phipps as the good landlord it used to be and the current landlord that has let this property decline to its current state of disrepair and uncleanliness. Over the 90 year history of our complex, the on-site staff has been systematically reduced from 26 full-time staff on site to present day total of just 12, a drop of more than 50%. The result has been a serious decline in the upkeep and repair of the building's physical infrastructure, the cleanliness of all public areas and a dramatic deterioration in the once beautiful gardens. When Phipps applied for this same rezoning change in 2016, they promised that the problems referred to above would be remedied. That has not happened. In fact, the situation is considerably worse at this point. The Tenants Association has had very much the same list of complaints for many years. In 2016, I collected over 200 signatures from the tenants with over 95% opposed to the rezoning. I fully expect the result would be the same today if COVID had allowed a new survey. I strongly believe that FIP should not be granted this rezoning request in light of their failure to be a proper custodian of their existing Sunnyside Garden Apartments complex. Why should we expect them to behave differently at a new site directly adjacent to the existing one? If they get Time a for this concept for this project, they'll have no incentive to keep the one it already exists up. And I wish I had more time to rebut some of the things that were said in the presentation that are untrue or misleading. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Gerald, uh, 86 years young. Thank you for uh, taking the time out to uh, uh, give us your testimony today. We, we appreciate that very much. The next speaker on this panel will be Margaret Perrin, who will be followed by Elizabeth Reynolds. Time starts now. Okay, you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. 
Uh, I've been here fewer years than my husband. I've been here living happily only 61 years. But I must say that the difference in the development into which I moved as a young woman is markedly different from where I am living now. Our first complaints were logged with Councilman Van Bremer in 2016. Phipps was given a little monitoring chart. Get with it and we'll see how it works. They didn't get with it, they withdrew. And the pictures taken by a resident, not somebody paid with wonderful multicolored photos, the pictures taken by a resident will show you what state of disrepair and ignoring tough we're, be, we're living in. It makes me feel as though they're it, turning a, an award-winning development originally into something that they can destruct as they wish. Phipps Garden Apartments has been neglected, it seems, with malice. Is there a new view for Phipps across the railroad tracks, across lower streets, way over to the bridges? Does Phipps Houses think it's going to build the next high rise right next to the little high rise they're building right on top of the railroad tracks? This is not a place for them to ignore us and build something like that. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. The next and last speaker on this panel will be Elizabeth Reynolds. Time starts now. I understand we are having extra time technical issues today, Chair. Uh, we are waiting for Elizabeth Reynolds. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. <clears throat> Time starts now. Thank you, sorry. I was... okay. My name is Elizabeth Reynolds. I oppose this proposal. I have lived a half a block uh, from Phipps Garden Apartments for 35 years, and I have heard nothing but uh, complaints from the residents there. Five years ago, Phipps proposed a similar plan at the same location. At that time, Councilman Van Bramer was taken aback by the overwhelming community opposition. He listened to his constituents. He walked around Phipps and, uh, with the tenants reps and the top management and was surprised at the conditions he saw. He opposed the proposal as did the council. Holding FIPS accountable for poor management of these Did we lose Elizabeth? I believe she muted yes. herself. Okay, Chair, it appears that we have lost Elizabeth. Uh, we'll take a moment to see if- Council, she is on, no. she just muted herself. Hey. Sorry. It's okay. Mm. Are you back? Say, am I back? Am I back? 
You're yes, back. You, you have one minute remaining. Okay. Um, well, the important point is that there are 50 images that have been taken recently inside the building and each of you council members must see these before you vote on this issue. They will be sent to each of you. And today, it's interesting that council member Van Bramer is now voting to approve this rezoning um, and development. Why, what has changed? Uh, Phipps had a, was a bad landlord in 2016 and is a worse one today. But now, despite the rhetoric, CM Van Bramer wants to become borough president in June. He now thinks he'd better build some so-called quote affordable housing in this district at the last minute. And I'll let others speak to the enactment of that proposal. Vote no, please. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you for your testimony today. Chair Moya, that was the last speaker on this panel. Uh, Let's see. Thank you very much uh, to all the panelists. The panel is now excused. Thank you again for your testimony today. Uh, Council, if we can call up the next panel. The next panel will include Denise Kean smith Deborah Farley, and Luther Carpenter. And the first speaker will be Denise Kean smith followed by Deborah Farley. Time starts now. Okay, hello. Hi, Denise, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm sorry, all of a sudden my panel, my, my screen went blank, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so um, hello council members and thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I am speaking in opposition of the Barnett Avenue project. My testimony is limited to two minutes, so I'm happy to provide more in-depth written testimony as previously done with the Queensborough president and the city planning commission. Phipps came before CB2 four years ago with a similar project plan and it was unanimously opposed. Former Queensborough President Melinda Katz also opposed it unless certain conditions were met. They were not. Phipps then withdrew the application at the final hour. Fast forward to 2020 and the proposed project is still not in the best interest of our neighborhood. The building conditions highlighted four years ago were never addressed. This applicant should not be given the opportunity to build in our neighborhood while ignoring the concerns of the Phipps Garden Apartments. While the AMI percentages have been reduced, they do not go far enough for the local residents or the intended targets of those coming out of homelessness. Due to the proximity of the Long Island Railroad, the dwelling will not be conducive to a healthy environment. The neighborhood cannot withstand the additional drain to our infrastructure and services. There are four additional developments currently being constructed within a half mile radius of this project with no proposed improvements. For these reasons, I respectfully request that the city council oppose this application. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Thank you for your testimony. Next speaker will be Deborah Farley, followed by Luther Carpenter. Time starts now. Uh, my name is Deborah Farley. I've been living in Sunnyside, Queens for nearly 70 years, and I am strongly opposed to the rezoning of Barnett. This neighborhood is very well populated, becoming overpopulated, and our resources are stretched. I'll be very specific. The number seven train is like a big selling point to have people come and live here great access to the train. My daughter currently, who lives on 46th Street, right off Skillman Avenue, has to walk down to Northern Boulevard to get on the train to go to work because people who are waiting on the platform to get on the number seven train pre-pandemic can't even get on the train. We were promised additional lines, increased services, but as a result of the pandemic, the MTA has already announced that there will be budget cuts and a reduction of services. This whole focus of vertical alignment building, you're just piling more people on top of a stressed out community, overused utilities, 
resources that are becoming exhausted. At some point, these people come out of the building, they walk on the sidewalks, they might have cars, they'll wanna get on the train. They won't be able to get on the train. We have a neighborhood that is threatened with the loss of businesses. There are people in this community that work in these businesses. We will have an increase in unemployment. We have suffered enough financial hardships during this pandemic. We don't need another construction. Because of the mass exodus out of the city, there are thousands and thousands of apartments that are available. You need affordable housing units? Let's recycle them and use them. We don't need to build more. This is more about developer greed than it is about need. As a matter of fact, the Phipps warehouses many of their empty apartments. If they were so concerned with uh, giving affordable units out. Time Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for your testimony today. Thank you. The, ne the next and last speaker on this panel will be Luther Carpenter. Time starts now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Very well. I'm very so I like to thank all of you for spending all this time. And I really think that the major points have been covered by all of the other speakers who are against. I am against it. My husband is against it. We've lived in the gardens for 35 plus years. And all I would like to ask you, to urge you, is to please listen to the people on the ground, the people who are affected by what's going to happen, the tenants of Phipps, the neighborhood, the community. We are all, or well, the majority of us are against it. We are the ones who know not the politicians and not the untrustworthy developer. So thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your testimony today. Um, sure, Moya. Yes, sir. that was the last speaker for this panel. Thank you. Uh, any questions from any council members for this panel? No, Chair, I see no members with questions. Okay, thank you. Um, There being no, uh, thank you, this panel is now excused. Thank you so much for your testimony today. Um, are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, if there are any other members of the public who wish to testify on the 50-25 Barnett Avenue rezoning proposal, please press the raise hand button now and the meeting will briefly stand at ease uh, while we check for members of the public. Chair Amoya, uh, I see no other members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Thank you, um, Arthur. Uh, there being no members of the public who wish to testify on the pre-considered uh, LU items for the 50-25 Barnett Avenue rezoning proposal under ULIPS number C200243 ZMQ and N200244 uh, ZRQ, the public hearing is now closed and this uh, item is laid over. Uh, this uh, concludes today's, uh, today's business. I would like to thank the members of the public, uh, but before um, we close out, I just wanna make one quick correction. Um, and that is if you uh, would like to get a copy of this testimony, uh, you can go uh, an email uh, to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov land use at council.nyc.gov. Uh, uh, so again, I'd like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, the subcommittee council, uh, land use uh, and all council staff and the Sergeant at Arms for participating in today's meeting. Uh, this meeting uh, is hereby adjourned.